So everybody, as you see from the title and the thumbnail, we finally got our hands on the brand new M4 Mac Mini. And let me tell you, Apple knows how to make a beautiful metal box. In this video, what I wanna do is actually unbox this thing, show you guys what that's like. Secondly, we're gonna go through the first impressions of the setup. We're gonna use Migration Assistant for the first time ever and see what that process is like. And then lastly, we'll talk about pricing, what configuration I use, and my initial impressions on what I think about the M4 Mac Mini and who this is for. So without further ado, let's unbox this thing. So Apple continues to be the master of unboxing experiences. There's really no other company that does it the way that they do, but this unboxing experience is ultra minimal. And again, gone are the days where you get a bunch of different things, even to the point where there's zero peripherals, and Apple's been doing that now for a couple of years. But for the unboxing experience here, it's pretty much just the computer and the cable itself. You open this thing up, and right there, Apple presents to you the brand new M4 Mac Mini in all of its glory. And like I said, this is a beautiful piece of hardware. Now, yes, it's just an aluminum box, and it doesn't have that much more going for it, but again, a five by five square that's two inches in depth, and it's housing all this compute is absolutely insane. And then underneath that, you do get the power cable, which is definitely long enough for any desk setup, but I do wish it was a little bit longer, especially if you do plan on kind of bringing this with you on the road, because this thing is so small and compact and so powerful that this is a portable powerhouse in my opinion. So I do wish the cable was a little bit longer, but it is a beautiful cable, very well made, it's braided, and you can tell that Apple really kind of spent some time and money on this cable. And then lastly, you do have some paperwork, but again, gone are the days of having any Apple stickers, so if you are looking for those, unfortunately, you will not be getting them. But now let's set this thing up because I am planning on migrating everything over from my M2 MacBook Air over to this brand new M4 Mac Mini. And I've never used a migration assistant and I've never actually done this one to one. Normally when I get a new Mac OS computer, I start absolutely fresh. But this time around, I wanna make sure that I'm holding onto everything my M2 Air has and moving it over to this M4 Mini. Let's get into it. So I've already run into an issue that I don't like and it's that if you don't have an Apple like Magic Mouse or Magic Trackpad, Getting this set up with a Bluetooth mouse at startup is relatively difficult because you can't access the Bluetooth menu and you're either gonna to need to hardwire in a mouse or have some sort of Bluetooth mouse that also has a 2.4 gigahertz connector, which I did find, but again, it's not something that I usually have often. And if I didn't have that, then I don't know what I would have done. I do have a Magic Trackpad that's about five or six years old that I haven't opened up in forever. But again, that's something that we're gonna to have to take into consideration when you do set this up, especially because it doesn't come with a keyboard, a mouse, or a trackpad in the packaging, of course. But let's go through the setup process. And I did bring my M2 MacBook Air close by in order to be able to kind of maybe transfer things over and see what that process is like. So we're gonna go through this little installation process. And now the same thing seems to be occurring here, right? I have a Bluetooth keyboard, but it's not a magic keyboard. Again, it's my Satechi keyboard, and there's no way for me to Bluetooth in from what I'm aware of. And if there is, it's not making itself readily known. So again, the installation process, unless you have a bunch of Apple products already sitting around, or you know, you spent $200 on a keyboard and then $150 on a magic mouse, a little bit of an annoying process, but let's continue on and see exactly how we fix this. So again, I had to hardwire in my Bluetooth keyboard via USB-C, and then it started working in order for me to do this. So another thing to take into account when you are signing in, when you're signing into your Wi-Fi, and then I'm probably gonna need to have my keyboard to sign into my iCloud and everything that goes with that. So keep that in mind, if you do not have those Apple products, and I'm gonna keep reiterating it, Apple makes it just a little bit more difficult for you to get really set up with this Mac mini, but it seems like all systems are go as of now, and let's keep going. So here now it's asking for a software update. I'm gonna press continue and I'm gonna install macOS Sequoia 15.1. This could take a little while depending on what's going on, but we'll come back once it's ready to go. So we are now updated to macOS Sequoia 15.1 and we should be able to go through this setup process pretty much all over again. So again, my goal here is to transfer everything over from my M2 MacBook Air over to this M4 Mac Mini and I do have them on the same Wi-Fi, but it doesn't look like the new Mac Mini is recognizing that my MacBook Air is right here. So let's see exactly how long this takes or what the situation is here. I have a better idea. I'm gonna connect it via a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Be right back. So I did open up my migration assistant on the M2 MacBook Air. We're gonna press to another Mac. We'll press continue. And then I'm hoping that it shows up on the new M4 Mac mini. So boom, there it is. It does pop up here. So we're gonna select this Mac. We're gonna press continue. And it looks like these numbers are here and good to go. And now it's gonna do its thing. I'm assuming this is gonna take a decent amount of time. So let's see exactly what's going on here. And we'll come back once this is all starting to get going. Okay, so it looks like my new M4 Mac Mini has found everything that it wants to transfer over. 
We're going to set this password and then let's see exactly how this is going to work. We'll press continue. We'll press agree, agree. And now it is slowly transferring everything over. Ideally, this is going to be the same type of setup when you're upgrading from an old iPhone to a new iPhone where everything just kind of stays the same. You know, all your files are where they're supposed to be on your desktop, all the applications should be there. But again, this is my first personal experience doing this coming from an older MacBook over to a Mac mini. So I thought I would kind of document this and show you guys exactly what this process is like and how long it's gonna take. As of right now, it is 12.50. We'll come back and I'll let you know exactly how long it takes to transfer over about 120 gigs of not only storage and files, but also applications, data inside of those applications. And I'm just curious to see how it's all handled, but we'll be right back. So I know it says that it's 1.50, but this actually finished up by 1, 2 p.m., which means it took 12 minutes to move over about 150 gigs of storage that I had on my M2 MacBook Air and everything is exactly the same. So this is the first time that I've personally used Migration Assistant. This is the first time that I've actually gone and I didn't start from fresh when it comes to using a Mac OS computer. And it's exactly how I left my M2 Air. It's got the same wallpaper, all the same files are on my desktop, which is relatively messy right now. All the same applications are down here. And then one of the coolest things is that it's still logged into a lot of my applications. So when I opened up something like Slack, I was still logged into my Slack. So it wasn't like when you start up a brand new iPhone, I had to re-sign in to all my different accounts. I'm still logged into my email. I'm still logged into my Chrome, into my Safari, into my messages. And you can just see just how fast this thing is moving. Again, I'm running the M4, the regular, the baseline version. All these applications opened up instantaneously and I'm just so excited to kind of put this M4 Mac Mini through its paces and see exactly what it's going to be like moving forward. But that will just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, the setup process has its growing pains depending on what kind of peripherals you have. But just know that if you do not have Mac-related peripherals like the Magic Keyboard, the Magic Mouse, the Magic Trackpad, and you want to go with cheaper alternatives, then you're going to need to hardwire them in, at least for the initial setup. And then after the fact, you can obviously connect them via Bluetooth and have your normal setup. So that's what I ended up having to do. And that's something that a lot of people are going to have to do because not everybody's going to want to spend basically almost $400, if not more, on all three of those peripherals if you end up picking them all up in the black colorway, especially because Apple likes to charge even more for that color. But outside of that, the setup process was very easy. I would recommend when it comes to the migration assistant to rely on a hardwired connection. So if you have a Thunderbolt cable laying around, highly recommend using that and plugging it into the rear of the Mac mini because that is a Thunderbolt 4 port, at least for the one that I have. And then also with my M2 MacBook Air, that was also a Thunderbolt port. So I was able to transfer things relatively quickly. But outside of that, everything worked flawlessly. Everything worked as it was intended to. And now that I'm all set up, I'm excited to kind of get my desk together because now I can declutter a lot of the stuff that I had on there. And then also see exactly what I can do with it in part of my ecosystem. My goal is to have this as my standalone desktop and then use my iPad Pro as my main mobile computer moving forward because that's pretty much how I use my M2 Air and never really left my desk. But That'll do it for this video. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. Did you pick up an M4 Mac Mini? Did you go through the student store to get an additional $100 off and pick this up for $4.99? Let me know in the comment down below. But, but if you made it to the end of this video, make sure to leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one and some upcoming videos, definitely check out one of these videos right here and consider subscribing, everybody. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace.